In this video, we are going to be talking about resonance. No, not renaissance. Here, let's explore the concept of resonance by walking through an example together. You've probably heard of an opera singer breaking a wine glass with their voice. Although this is quite difficult to do in real life, it is possible. How can this happen? The answer is because of resonant frequencies. Every material has what are called natural frequencies. The natural frequency of an object is the speed at which the object vibrates when it is disrupted by another stimulus. Picture four wine glasses, each filled with different amounts of water. When each of these glasses are disrupted by another stimulus, they are each going to vibrate at their own natural frequency. Let's say each of these four wine glasses were tapped with a fork. Which of these wine glasses has the highest natural frequency? That's right, this wine glass has the highest natural frequency. Recall that the frequency is the rate at which the oscillations occur. We can measure the frequency by counting the number of waves that pass through a location per second for a traveling wave. Therefore, the correct answer is a graph that has the most wavelengths over that period of time. And remember that amplitude is related to intensity, not frequency, and so can be ignored. Now picture an opera singer in the room. The singer's voice is hitting a note with this frequency that is shown on the graph. Which of the wine glasses is the singer's voice going to shatter? Only the second wine glass is going to shatter because the singer's voice and that wine glass are in resonance. The energy exchange that occurred caused the wine glass to shatter. If the frequency were any lower, then no energy would be exchanged and the glass remains intact. More interestingly, if the frequency were any higher, then there would still not be any exchange of energy. The frequencies must match for them to be in resonance. Now, let's take this concept of resonance and look at its role in chemistry. We will zoom in on the microscopic nature of matter and look at how atoms and molecules interact with light. Here, resonance is when the frequency of light matches some natural frequency in atoms or molecules. As before, if the frequency of light matches a natural frequency in the matter, then the light will transfer energy to the matter. It will be absorbed. Some examples of resonance between light and microscopic matter include how microwave light matches the frequency of molecular rotations, how infrared light matches the frequency of bond vibrations, and how UV invisible light matches natural frequencies of the electron cloud of many atoms and molecules. This is harder to show and we will examine it further in another video. Let's take a look at some example problems. Bonds in CO2 vibrate at a natural frequency of 4 times 10 to the 13 hertz. Infrared light. Which of the following will be absorbed by CO2 in the atmosphere? That's right, if the frequency of light, in this case infrared light, being emitted from Earth is equal to the natural frequency of the CO2, 4 times 10 to the 13 hertz, then the light is absorbed. This is why CO2 is called a greenhouse gas. It is responsible for heating up the atmosphere by absorbing infrared light from the Earth. Infrared light with the frequency of 4 times 10 to the 13 hertz is absorbed by CO2 molecules causing them to vibrate and heat up. What is true about light with the frequency of 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz? If the frequency of the light does not match the natural resonant frequency of the matter, then the light is not absorbed. So this light would go right through the molecules of CO2 and have no effect. It's important to realize that this is not our day-to-day -day experience. In the macroscopic world, if you go and buy something that costs exactly $10, you can pay with a $10 bill, two $5 bills, or a $20 bill and get change. Here, if the frequency is too low or too high, nothing happens. Resonance requires that the light's frequency matches exactly the matter's natural resonant frequency in order for them to interact. It is through these natural frequencies of matter that the scientists of the early 20th century were able to start learning about the nature of electrons and atoms. What they ended up finding was confusing, exciting, and all about resonance.